Technology and the COVID pandemic are forcing pharma companies to a new marketing and sales system with smaller, more agile and smarter teams. The pharma industry is no longer being rewarded for incremental innovation, need to products and selling the most pills. Companies will need to demonstrate that their brands add value to patients and they will have to offer a package of products and health services that the market not only wants and needs, but is willing to pay a premium for. Trade marketing is at the epicenter of this new paradigm. Hi, my name is Manuel Benitez, and I am a partner at the Mindful, a boutique strategy consulting firm focused on growth. And I am Juan Robert, senior manager at the Mindful, and together we will discuss relevant aspects to take into account when developing a trade marketing strategy. Before jumping into trade marketing, we wanted to briefly reflect on how the patient journey has changed based on digital empowerment. From symptoms appearance to condition management and treatment switching, patients are getting used to research, make purchase decisions, and interact with stakeholders online. As soon as symptoms appear, patients are likely to check online before even deciding to go to a doctor's visit. And even after the visit, the patient is likely to research online regarding the diagnosis he received and the treatment options he has. This dynamic of preceding and succeeding personal interactions with online touch points will continue along the patient journey and be present during product selection at the pharmacy. Depending on the drug type, and domestic regulations, patients have the potential to conduct their purchase entirely online or just conduct research to learn about brands and prices before going to the pharmacy. In this context, the retail scenario has changed quite a bit for individual pharmacies. And in order to achieve better results, pharmacies need to deploy digital tools to appropriately engage with their customers. Activities as simple as having a Google Maps location appropriately set up and nice pictures can drive one client away from a competing pharmacy. It is well known that trade marketing is an important discipline for most consumer good companies. Every B2B2C company invests heavily in building a brand and positioning for them to be ruined by the retailer or distributor. Here is where trade marketing appears and companies work together with their key or main retailers to reinforce that positioning and promotion with specific shelf space, signs and discounts, among other resources. While this is common practice for consumer goods, it is not so common for pharmaceutical companies, as many of them are mostly focused on the doctors and patients rather than on the pharmacists. Nevertheless, Pharma companies have and will continue to implement many actions to work together with their natural channel, the pharmacies. And beyond that, pharma companies are also beginning to leverage digital channels in what is known as online trade marketing. Before taking a look into which strategies, tactics, and trade marketing actions can be undertaken, it is key to understand the product, the brand, and the category since these factors will impact the scope of trade marketing activities. For example, is the product prescription OTX or OTC? An OTC product on a display shelf is different in comparison to one that has to be out of sight and only managed by the pharmacist. Following the same train of thought, it is necessary to understand the brand strategy. Does the product have a brand of its own? Is there an umbrella brand? For this particular line of products? Is the product generic and without any branding? Again, the answers to such questions will impact the activities to be pursued as well as the budget to be assigned. For example, eye catching posters or branded shelves make sense for a branded product, yet the same cannot be said for a generic product, for which it may be useful to establish a good deal with the pharmacist or him or her to recommend a product over others. Another key factor is to understand how the direct and indirect competition are behaving. We might ask ourselves, 
are they undertaking trade marketing activities? Which ones? Is the competition branded? Is it generic? Furthermore, and this is specifically for pharmaceutical trade marketing, we should take into account the type of ailment that the drug treats, whether it's severe or mild, it's acute or chronic. This impacts not only the message, but also the strategy. For an acute ailment, the target is broader. However, for a chronic illness, it's usually a reduced and specific portion of the population, thus dictating how targeted our tactics should be. On top of this, considering the type of ailment leads us to understand the type of customer better. For example, their level of expertise or their willingness to experiment or not. Understanding customer attitudes provides ins insights into needs and how those needs are fulfilled. For example, expertise, willingness to experiment, cost consciousness, patient empathy. Needs are not always consistent across situations. Physicians' treatment goals may differ considerably for different types of patients. For instance, advanced versus early stage or motivated versus unmotivated patients. Combination of customer attitudes and situations create need states that are often the most powerful predictor of behavior. For example, to prevent hospitalization, to educate and motivate, and to stabilize and control. Finally, other factors to bear in mind are if the drug is usually reimbursed or not, as well as specific country regulations. While in consumer goods, the retailer has a great deal of influence over the consumer, in most regions, it does not compare to the influence that the pharmacist possesses. Most patients usually ask pharmacies for recommendations and respect their opinions a considerable amount. Furthermore, in most countries, patients cannot purchase drugs without the pharmacy's agreement. Hence, a key piece of a pharma trade marketing strategy is understanding the pharmacist and how to get him or her as an effective advocate for our products. When it comes to OTC drugs, Depending on the regulation and customs of the countries, the trade marketing strategy may focus more on the consumer or more on the pharmacist. For instance, in the US, OTC drugs are usually displayed on shops and accessible to consumers. Such is the case for large pharmacy chains like CVS or Walgreens. In this context, there is no doubt that most of the trade marketing effort should be focused on the consumer. However, in other countries, such as Germany, in order to obtain an OTC product, the consumer needs to have a discussion with the pharmacist. In this context, the target of the trade marketing strategy will most likely be the pharmacist and not the consumer. While we already mentioned that we need to understand the competition, it's also key to have a comprehensive understanding of the market structure. In other words, is the category growing or is it stable? On which customers is the competition focusing on? Should we focus on the same ones or is there another interesting segment? Where should we target to increase our sales? Asking these kinds of questions will enable us to map pharmacies using, for example, a matrix that plots current and potential sales, allowing us to establish a target and quantitative objectives. Once we have further information on the product, category, brand, and the specificities of the market, for instance, regulatory constraints, we are in a strong position to start drafting the strategy based on one of the following as a driver. Channel. Which channels will we target? Geography. In the sense of understanding cultural uses and regulatory differences for each geography. Brand and category. Will it be brand specific or category specific? There will be a clear strategic trade off between the available budget, level of opportunity, and micro market tailored needs. To understand how to maximize marketing return on investment, MROI, weight the following five questions. 
One, what are the specific challenges to your brand caused by changes to the way the consumers are making decisions? Two, do current budgets reflect where the greatest MRI value is? Three, where do you need deep analytical insights to guide marketing mix decisions? That is, what are the real trade-offs you need to wait? Four, what's the most perfect integrated analytical engine you could imagine, combining data from every source you could desire? Five, what's a good first step you can implement immediately? Furthermore, there are decisions to be made. First, which type of tools to provide to the field force? Then, the prioritization of products for a campaign. Thirdly, the prioritization of pharmacies based on potential increase of sales against effort needed. Finally, the mix of pharmacists and consumer incentives and actions. For instance, the pharmacy's margin against the consumer price, the shelf positioning relevance, and the promotional material focus. Once the strategic driver is defined, a team should be organized accordingly. A lean organization is crucial to assign clear roles and responsibilities, as well as KPIs and personal targets. Here, you may find some archetypical organization charts. They may be channel-driven, geography-driven, category-driven, or channel-by-category-driven. One set of positions will function as account managers, while business development and the marketing sectors will guide them with strategy and insights. In the same way as every team in the organization, a trade marketing team should have certain capabilities. First, strong analytical and business foundations as to back up decision making on campaign priorities, tools, and messaging. Then, lean communication and the training of field force as to ensure trade marketing is embraced as a useful tool and complemented with field experience. Finally, broad agency management to manage micro market strategy materials implementation. All these capabilities have to be embedded in an MROI mindset. As e-commerce has become the norm for most retailers, the same has happened for pharma companies. In accordance with specific country regulations, the pharmaceuticals online retail market is growing very fast, and this poses a huge opportunity for online trade marketing. Going back to the basics, trade marketing can be set to consist of the management of the channels to reach the consumers. Hence, in online trade marketing, there are two different approaches to be considered. One, the replication of the offline trade marketing, but online, meaning working with online pharmacies to position products better on the landing page or launch promotional campaigns. And two, using digital tools to engage with the pharmacies and channels such as developing pharmacy loyalty programs. This is the case of Pfizer, which developed Access Pfizer to provide training modules, discounts, and stock information. Johnson & Johnson also developed a similar platform to that end. In this sense, using virtual trade marketing tools provide pharmacies around the world with higher value-added tools that have low costs and result in high loyalty. Deep diving into some examples, Access Pfizer in the UK is composed by the Pharmacy Partner, which is a dedicated portal that beyond providing Pfizer-specific deal flow information, also offers commercial toolkits that are centered in the pharmacy's business and are Pfizer agnostic. For example, general informative banners for patients. This platform also provides training materials for pharmacists regarding broad health issues. Pfizer for Professionals and Smart Hub respond to the digitalization of their relationship with physicians and clinics beyond the merely transactional aspects of renewing stock or accessing prescribing information. 
Overall, we could say Pfizer positions itself as a partner that appeals to the merchant beyond a purely HCP-oriented partner. Johnson & Johnson focuses activities much more on the training side with its pharmacy academy. Training is directed at young pharmacists and aims at helping them get acquainted with common ailments and earn continuous professional development points, which reveals a strategy targeted at building brand loyalty within young clerks that may or may not own the store. Both Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer's cases are good examples of management of relationships with pharmacies that migrate online. But this should not be considered a standalone effort. The core of the relationship is still person to person, and online tools used need to be encouraged by relationship owners. But what about other traditional trade marketing activities such as discounts and shelf space placement? These are present in the ales of online pharmacies such as Walgreens, where privileged shelf space is allocated to seasonal promotions, combos, and or best-selling products. It is important to note that online pharmacies have spread beyond key accounts such as Walgreens, and individual mom and pop pharmacies may also sell online depending on local regulations, which means that depending on the nature of the products you manage, you will need to pay more or less attention to these activities. To a better understanding of the role of trade marketing in the pharmaceutical industry, we can improve the relationship between pharma companies and their natural channels, as well as leverage the important role of pharmacists in the marketing of products to customers. To create your trade marketing strategy, we must perform a deep dive on the market structure before defining our strategy based on channel, geography, brand, and MROI and organizing a team accordingly. We have also explored the opportunity for online trade marketing within Parliament, whereby we may simply replicate offline trade marketing or follow the lead of industry giants such as Pfizer that made use of digital tools to enhance engagement. While trade marketing in the pharma industry is at worst overlooked and at best misunderstood, we hope that this presentation serves to highlight the importance of this tool in the industry, in addition to providing a meaningful guide regarding its implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Manuel, for sharing these insights with us. Um, very interesting, and I'm very happy to, to introduce yourself also to the, to the audience. So, as we had the pleasure also to cooperate in our past professional lives working at Sanofi when you were consulting in, in some in portfolio selection. So I'm deeply convinced of the, of the added value that you provide to the industry. And having said this, um, a short intro about yourself. So um, you started nine years ago with the MindCo and currently you're leading the team um, that help companies to design their strategic plan special, specializing in advising companies from healthcare consumer goods and financial services industry yourself you have a, you have a bachelor of in economics from the university uh, torquata di tella and you're dedicated to strategic consulting and um, like that's uh, very very good and that's why you're here you also enjoy to 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 pass on this knowledge and awesome. strategic consulting to junior professionals to to other professionals in the in the industry and that's why i'm very much looking forward also to your further observations that you would like to to give Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mario, for, for your introduction. And, and I hope the, the audience enjoyed the, the, the short presentation that we developed. Um, I guess that, you know, a few reflections, let's say. Um, 
with the COVID, of course, the, the COVID pandemic, the scenario has changed uh, quite a bit. And of course, this has impact, uh, let's say, across functions and across the, the value chain of, of, of pharma. Um, just before joining this meeting, I was, uh, I, 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 or this webinar, I was talking to a, an Italian primary packaging manufacturer, maybe you're acquainted with them, which have a very large share of the, of the COVID vaccines, uh, let's say, vials and, and syringes and uh, and it's uh, it's amazing to see how at all levels uh, the covid has has really impacted the way pharma operates and with regards to to, to trade marketing in particular and and field forces as well um, the digitalization has been has been boosted and this is no secret, neither for pharma or, or other industries. But at the end of the day, um, I guess that it's important that the core of the relationships are, are, are person to person. And, and, and online tools are, should be driven and leveraged by these uh, people who, who drive uh, th these relationships. And many pharma companies around the, the globe, we're actually working with some of them who are redefining their teams uh, in light of this new new situation. And uh, but but that's not only you know that's not the end of, of the impact. If I can share my screen for a second, all right. I think you can see now. At the end of the day, if we go to one of the charts that we were that we were showing. Uh, of the consumer attitudes versus the situations. Of course, the situations, uh, both for consumers and for pharmacists, have changed dramatically. So, because they can't go out, they, in, in many places they can't go out, they can't go to the pharmacies. Um, of course, they, uh, and thus the, the trade marketing focus uh, changes quite a bit. Nevertheless, the foundations, and, and let me go to another of the of the charts that we that we showed. The foundations remain um, the same. Um, a trade, a marketing should look to maximize MROI uh, based on the available budget, based on the level of opportunity, and based on the micro market tailor needs. At the end of the day, what appears to have changed quite a bit. Uh, probably has to do with the level of opportunity because a lot of therapeutic areas have, have seen a, a dramatic shift in, in consumption and, and, the, and with the micro market tailor needs because different patients are facing uh, distinct situations. One of those situations is the, 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 the incapacity or the, or the unwillingness to interact Personally, but there are others, uh, other situations that are also that have also been impacted, and this calls for, uh, let's say, a, a re, uh, restructuring and re, uh, re imagination of what a, a trade marketing strategy is. You know, when when people are not uh, going to pharmacies as much as they used to. And this is where, where online uh, really takes off. And we see a lot of companies um, that are even developing direct to consumer uh, channels, uh, which has been for the pharma industry a desire uh, for, well, I, I, I don't have that much experience, right, 10 years, but uh, it, as long as I remember, uh, it has been a, a strong uh, desire from the, from, from the pharma company, from some pharma companies or medical devices companies as well, and and this of course opens a, a new uh, a new era, let's say, uh, particularly with regards to the information. The amounts of data that we have today uh, have, have shifted dramatically. Pharma companies are, you know, not, not only getting getting the data, you know, the traditional IMS, but also are developing a, a lot of relevant internal data uh, to feed these strategic uh, decisions 
uh, particularly related to marketing, uh, which can be thought of consumer, pharmacist, and even physician visitation. So, so this is a bit how, how we see uh, things are, are shifting and, and, and how pharma companies are reacting. Most, in most of the cases, these decisions are taken at, a, at country level, let's say, uh, because clearly the, the regulatory aspects change, change quite a bit. But in any case, I wanted to open as well a bit the, the discussion and hear from, from the audience, from you, uh, if there's any, any questions that, or, or any comments that, that you would like us uh, to know or to answer. Thank you very much, Manuel, for these, for these insights. Um, much appreciated. And um, I would have two short questions um, to you. So, as you rightly lined out, of course, all this brought us much more to the, to the verge of online channels. And how do you see the role of online pharmacies? for pharmaceutical companies as of course they could leverage a, a huge channel with less let's say with less sales representation you're right and i, I guess that in a in a sense the the impacts for me are, are are two on one end which is highly important for for pharma companies is the consolidation of of, of the client at the end of the day uh, online uh, many times means consolidation in the face of, of the customers. Um, while you saw probably thousands of, of mom and pups uh, dispersed and, and, and which are were individual clients, now you probably see a lot of consolidation uh, into, into online pharmacies. This has happened before with, with when, when the chains appears and now it's, let's say, deepening. That's on one end. And on the other end, the tools that, that pharma can provide to online pharmacies are probably different that, than those that they should provide for, for physical pharmacies. Uh, of course, shelf space becomes much more, much more important. And let's say product descriptions, videos, and tutorials also become a uh, much more important so it's quite it, it it changes quite a bit the focus of 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 marketing and trade marketing in particular that's that's my my view thank you and another question um, i would have and um, we have addressed this also in the previous sessions what do you think is the um, how do companies have to go from the switch from a traditional sales representative call towards an omni-channel online approach so how what do you see as best practices there um what i have seen which is actually so so the COVID happened and many companies said let's restructure our sales uh, sales force and they did it let's say undiscretionally what i see is that many physicians uh, are actually not Opting with that strategy very well. And I see many physicians that used to be visited, for example, by five or six sales reps personally, let's say in a hospital or in a, in, a, in a private practice. And now those relationships, pharma companies have pushed for those relationships to migrate online and to have, let's say, more physicians or more pharmacies per representative, and that in many cases have hurted, um, have hurted the, the relationship because physicians many times take that occasion uh, and, and let's say trim the amount of, of relationships that they have. And whenever uh, a visit becomes a WhatsApp, it's much easier to ignore that, that WhatsApp message uh, or that online interaction. This is why it is very important to keep uh, and, 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 and to keep in mind that the core of the relationship is person um, to person. And at the end of the day, what I have seen is, is that a lot of indiscriminated, let's say, cuts and reorganization that maybe they reduce costs, but they also reduce physician and, and a pharmacist engagement with, with the pharma. 
So in that sense, um, I think that you know, this should be taken into account. It's easier uh, or it's harder to engage uh, online than it is in, in person. And, and even though maybe in the, in the laboratory, let's say in the numbers, uh, you can see that with online, leveraging online tools, you can really increase the, the coverage of a single uh, field force, uh, field, for, field force um, the quality of that coverage may decrease significantly. So that's the trade-off that needs to be needs to be balanced in my view. Thank you. Thank you for these insights. So I'm definitely looking forward to connect back in the in the networking session and of course also invite you to, to participate there to and of course all the audience if you have further questions just put them to, to Manuel via the platform. So Thank you very much for your participation. It has been a pleasure. And see you very soon, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll stick around for the next sessions. Thank you. We, are, we will be back for the next sessions after a short break, 10 minutes break. And at 7.15, we will be back for the, for the next session. See you soon. Yeah.